Hello everyone. Today we will discuss the part 8 of the important notes for the biochemistry so that you can easily able to answer the one liners and the MCQs in your exam. First of all the Warburg's effect. Now as you can see in this figure that in the normal in the normal uh, metabolism what happens is the glucose normally enters inside the cytoplasm. Okay. And over here the glucose converts into pyruvic acid and most of the pyruvic acid goes into the TCA cycle okay, by the way of acetyl CoA. Okay. But what happens in the Warburg's effect? In the cancerous cell, what happens is this glucose, excess of glucose, enters inside the cell, okay, inside the cytoplasm. Okay, and this pyruvic acid, this most of the pyruvic acid actually goes on to the lactic acid formation. Okay, and very less amount actually goes inside the TCA cycle. Okay, so this is actually the Warburg's effect. The Warburg's effect basically occurs in the cancerous cell where there is excess production of the lactic acid. Now aerobic glycolysis occurs in the cancerous cell but the end product is the lactic acid. When glucose in the cancerous cell gives only 2 ATPs. Why? Because as you can see most of this goes into the lactic acid pathway and very less goes into the TCA cycle, right? Warburg's effect is aerobic glycolysis and no oxidative phosphorylation occurs. Now shuttles in the metabolism pathway. Transportation of the NADH from the cytoplasm to the mitochondria occurs with the help of two shuttles. That is the malate aspartate shuttle and the glycerol phosphate shuttle. NADH cannot cross the inner mitochondrial membrane. So shuttles are basically used to transport the NADH from the cytoplasm inside the mitochondria. As you can see in this, we have two shuttles. Now over here, as you can see in this figure, the malate aspartate shuttle. Now over here what happens is, as you can see, this aspartate actually converts into oxaloacetate. Okay, and this oxaloacetate actually converts into malate. Okay, by the help of, by, by, by taking the H plus from the NADH. Okay. Now this H plus is then taken along with this particular ballet. Means of course the oxaloacetate takes this H plus okay, and converts into malate. And this malate actually enters inside the inner mitochondrial membrane. Actually enters inside the mit mitochondrial matrix. As because the NADH cannot cross the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay. So this is the way to transport the NADH. Okay. So now this malate actually enters inside this mitochondrial matrix okay and this malate then uh, this actually helps in the reduction of this particular NAD plus and converts into NADH okay and then this NADH is now actually we can say inside the mitochondrial matrix okay have crossed the inner mitochondrial membrane same thing occurring with the glycerol phosphate shuttle what they are doing as you can see this glycerol 3 phosphate okay it would actually take the hydrogen of this particular NADH okay and then it will uh, transport this particular edge of the NADH inside the inner mitochondrial membrane and will convert itself into DHAP. Okay. So these are the two shuttles which actually helps in the transportation of the hydrogen ion from outside to inside by the NADH. Now the NADH shuttle, melt and the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle are only used by those pathways which occur in the cytoplasm. Melt shuttle is important in the liver and the heart. Cytoplasmic melt dehydrogenase converts oxaloacetate to melt and uses the NADH. Melt pyruvate and the aspartate can cross the inner mitochondrial membrane. Mitochondrial malate dehydrogenase, that is the MDH, converts the malate to oxaloacetic acid and produces the NADH. Oxaloacetic acid cannot cross the inner mitochondrial membrane. So the malate shuttle is also known as a malate aspartate shuttle as the malate and the aspartate crosses the inner mitochondrial membrane in this shuttle. We discussed about this before also. That this particular aspartate actually coming out from this particular inner mitochondrial membrane actually converts into OAA. And then this oxaloacetic acid actually converts into malic acid. Okay, and this malic acid actually enters inside this particular inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, and then gives the hydrogen to the NAD. Glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle is more important in the brain 
and the skeletal muscles. Cytoplasmic glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme converts the DHAP to glycerol 3 phosphate and uses the NADH. We we'll discuss about this before also. The first of all, this DHAP actually converts into the glycerol 3 phosphate okay, to take this particular hydrogen. Okay, and then this glycerol 3 phosphate actually converts into DHAP again after giving the hydrogen to this particular uh, mitochondria. Mitochondrial glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase converts the glycerol 3 phosphate to DHAP okay, and uses the FAD. Mallet shuttle takes NADH from the cytoplasm and delivers the NADH in the mitochondria. Glycerol phosphate shuttle takes NADH from the cytoplasm and delivers FADH2 in the mitochondria. So, just know the difference that the mallet shuttle takes NADH from the cytoplasm and delivers NADH in the mitochondria while the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle over here this shuttle takes the NADH from the cytoplasm and delivers FADH2 in the mitochondria. Glycerol phosphate shuttle is a shorter shuttle and is a quick source of ATPs and is less prone to be affected by any deficiency. Citrate shuttle is used in fatty acid synthesis. Citrate shuttle transfers the acetyl-CoA, as you can see, acetyl-CoA from the mitochondria into the cytoplasm. So remember over here, the citrate shuttle basically transfers the acetyl-CoA from the mitochondria to the cytosol. ATP citrate lyase breaks the citrate to oxaloacetic acid and acetyl-CoA in the cytoplasm. The creatine phosphate shuttle transports the ATP from the mitochondria to the cytoplasm. The ADP ATP translocase enzyme, which is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane, transfers the ATP out into the intermembrane space, and ADP over here is transferred inside into the mitochondrial matrix. That means over here, this particular ADP ATP translocase enzyme transfers the ATP out into the intermembrane space and over here the ADP is transferred inside the mitochondrial matrix. Okay. Now the enzyme mitochondrial creatine kinase. Now this is the mitochondrial creatine kinase. Okay. And this is the cytoplasmic creatine kinase. So now this enzyme mitochondrial creatine kinase, this particular enzyme in the intermembrane space converts the creatine to the creatine phosphate. Okay. And this creatine phosphate which is the cytoplasm. Okay. Now, this cytoplasmic creatine kinase again converts the creatine phosphate to the creatine and this phosphate is used to form the ATP. So, today up till here, we discuss about the further important notes of biochemistry in our further next video. Thank you so much.